and of the Haudenosaunee peoples, the First Nation community that is in closest proximity to the city of Markham are the Chippewas of Georgina Island. We honor them as the past, present, and future caretakers of this land. I'm joined by my colleagues, the Honorable Helena Jasik, Minister of Public Services and Procurement, Paul Chang, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Housing and Diversity and Inclusion and Member of Parliament for Markham Unionville, Majid Johari, Member of Parliament for Richmond Hill, and Leah Taylor Roy, Member of Parliament for uh, Oak Ridges, <laughs> Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. And thank you to the Federation of Chinese Canadians for hosting us today. Et je vous remercie de vous être joint à nous pour découvrir comment le gouvernement éclaire ses voies d'assises pour permettre aux habitants de Hong Kong de venir au Canada et de s'y installer favorablement and easy la croissance de notre économie et de nos communautés. I'm pleased to introduce you to the hardworking Paul Chang, Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Housing and Diversity and Inclusion and Member of Parliament for Markham Unionville. <laughs> P.S. Chang is here speaking on behalf of the Honorable Sean Fraser, Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship. Please welcome P.S. Chang. Thank you so much, MP Jean Yip, for the kind introduction. Uh, good morning, everyone. 大家好。我先先开始跟你说，我也不会说中文，我也不会说法文，我只讲英文，可以吗？谢谢。Okay. Okay. So thank you, uh, MP Yip, for the kind introduction, and like I'm so happy to welcome Minister Jasek. MP uh, Majid Johari and MP Leah Taylor-Roy to my riding right here in Markham Unionville. And thank you all for joining me here today in uh, Markham. I have been living in Markham now for over 32 years. I'm especially honored to be making this exciting and incredible, grateful to the Federation of Chinese uh, Canadian for hosting us today. Canada has always advocated for freedom and democracy, and that's why we are proud to stand shoulder to shoulder with those who seek to live in peace and security. Our government is committed to introducing immigration measures aimed at supporting newcomers that hold a wide range of skills and talent. Our country first opened its doors to the people of Hong Kong by creating dedicated immigration pathway for them in 2021. Our government is continuing working to expand these pathways and make it easier for Hong Kongers to remain in Canada in a long-term basis. For example, in February, Immigration Refugee Citizenship Canada extended and expanded the Open Work Permit Program for eligible Hong Kong residents allowing more people to benefit from this program. So today on behalf of the Honorable Sean Fraser, Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship, I'm pleased to announce another way Canada is making it easier for people from Hong Kong to become permanent residents of our country, Canada. Since 2021, Hong Kong residents have been able to apply one of two streams. Stream A meant for graduates from a Canadian post-secondary institute, or Stream B meant for those with at least a year of full-time work experience in Canada. As of August 15 of this year, our government will be removing the education requirement from Stream B. That is the Canadian work experience path. Removing this requirement means more Hong Kongers who have worked in Canada will be eligible for permanent residency, easing the transition to permanent status for those who are 
already working in Canada under the Open Work Permit Program. It also simplifies the application process as there will be no longer be a requirement to submit proof of education or, uh, sorry, proof of education for Stream B. Those who aren't eligible to apply for permanent residency under these pathways still have Canada's support. They may, they may be able to apply to come here through different avenues, such as our economic immigration program, family sponsorship, or existing resettlement programs for those at risk of persecution who have fled another country. Since Canada created these two pathways to permanent residency in 2021, more than 3,000 Hong Kongers have come here through them and now call Canada home. Expanding Stream B will allow us to bring more talented and bright individuals from Hong Kong with valuable Canadian work experience into our workforce. With so many young people in Hong Kong casting their eyes abroad, we want them to choose Canada to study, to work, and to settle down in. Attracting talented skills, attracting talented skill, Hong Kong youth helps Canada's workforce stay competitive, dynamic, and innovative. This measure also aligns with Canada's recently re released Indo-Pacific strategy, a comprehensive roadmap to deepening our engagement in the Indo-Pacific over the next decade. We are working hard to increase our contribution to regional peace and security and strengthen economic growth and resilience, enhance our significant people-to-people -people tie and support sustainable programs across the region. In closing, our government sees expanding and simplifying these dedicated pathways to permanent residency as a win-win situation. It allows us to be, welcome more Hong Kongers while also simultaneously helping Canadian businesses fill labor gaps with people who already have worked experience here. I'm honored to pass along this good news to you today. I'm confident this will open many more doors for those abroad and will foster a better relationship with people from Hong Kong. Thank you all for coming today. I will pass it back to MP Jean Yip for closing before taking questions from our media friends. Thank you. Thank you, P.S. Chang, for that exciting announcement. And now I'd like to hand it over to uh, Minister of uh, Public Service and uh, Procurement, uh, Helena Jasik, and also the Member of Parliament for Markham Stofil. Thank you so much, Jean. And Thank you, Paul, for this really exciting announcement on behalf of our colleague, uh, the Minister uh, of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship, Sean Fraser. And I'm delighted to be here with other members of our York Region Liberal Caucus, MP Majid Johari and MP Leah Taylor-Roy. Uh, so it's really an honor to be here with you today. Uh, Paul and Jean have covered the substance of this announcement extremely well. Uh, but this is an issue that I know that uh, many of our constituency offices across Canada have been dealing with. How do we get people from Hong Kong who are seeking permanent residency here in our country a facilitated, simplified way of coming to our great country, Canada. I think uh, one of the things I reflect on quite often, I came to Canada at the age of 12. I'm an immigrant. Uh, many of you came to Canada as, as children or adults, uh, but there are so many Canadians that have been here for generations, and of course we've acknowledged our indigenous people. What do we have in common? We're all here to build our country up, and I truly believe that we all feel that if we live together in peace, harmony, we have a better country. We take talent from around the world and we work hard in terms of building our economy, our prosperity, and ultimately at the end of the day living um, with our neighbors and uh, enjoying each other's company as well as building one of the greatest countries in the world. So, 
Uh, today's announcement has broadened that pathway in terms of bringing people to our wonderful country. Uh, and we've been working on this since 2021 to try and improve the dedicated immigration pathway, particularly for people from Hong Kong. As we all know, uh, democracy is uh, being somewhat threatened in Hong Kong, and we need people here in our country uh, to help bring um, their experience. And by removing this uh, one requirement, we're going to simplify the process. So uh, I think today's announcement is, is really important. Uh, it will create opportunities for families here in Canada, in Hong Kong, and there are opportunities that do have the potential to transform people's lives. So th thank you so very much for the invitation to be here. And I think I'll hand it back now to you, Jean. Thank you, Minister Jazik. Thank you for taking the time to come here and uh, join us to hear this great news about how we're making it easier for more people from Hong Kong to Im immigrate to communities across our country. Removing the education requirement under Stream B is a win-win situation. It means that we can welcome more Hong Kongers to Canada who need our support while simultaneously helping Canadian businesses fill labour gaps with workers who already have work experience here. I'm excited about this change as it signifies Canada's ongoing support for the people of Hong Kong and allows for continued meaningful exchanges between Canada and Hong Kong. Thank you. Now over to Eugene Sandu to moderate media questions. Hello, everyone. Good to go. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Eugene Sandu. I work in communications for the Department of Immigration. Uh, so we will now start the media Q&A period. Uh, so before we start, just a reminder uh, for members of the media, please identify yourself uh, with your name and media organization. Uh, but for asking one question, and we'll take one question and one follow-up question, uh, please tell us who your question is also directed to. Um, we will take questions from the floor and from the phone line. We will alternate between both. Um, so go ahead, and if you could just line up behind this microphone for questions on the floor. Thank you. Hello, my name is Joseph Lau from Toronto TUB. So my question is that uh, removing those conditions is great news. But on the other hand, did the government, does the government have any estimated number of applicants will be applying within two years while you are removing those conditions? So the conditions have been removed as of now so that we can make it easier for people from Hong Kong to apply to come in here. And that's what the process is. And hopefully we can streamline it better to make sure that we can get more people from Hong Kong to come here. Thank you, Joseph, for your question, though. My follow-up symbol is yes, that we welcome those newcomers, but on the other hand, that's a skill mismatch scenario. Okay, like a film editor come to, come to Canada, end up they working in a warehouse. So how do you, like, say we welcome more people and get them the decent and qualified jobs? Thank you. Thank you so much, Joseph. Uh, we will welcome the Hong Konger people here, but in terms of... Uh, jobs, they will have to look for jobs, and depending on the qualification they have, what, whatever job they can get here is what we're looking for them, right? That's the main, main step, is getting them to come here. Getting the jobs, that's the secondary part for us at this point. Thank you so much, Joseph. We have a question from the phone line. Thank you. Merci. We will now take questions from the telephone lines. If you have a question, Please press star one on the device's keypad. There will be a brief pause while the participants register. Si vous désirez poser une question, veuillez s'il vous plaît appuyer sur les touches étoile 1 de votre appareil. Il y aura un court délai vous permettant de vous enregistrer dans la file d'attente. The first question is from Dylan Robertson from the Canadian Press. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Uh, hi there. Thanks for taking our questions. Uh, just for the uh, MPs here, I I'm wondering uh, about the crackdown that we're seeing in Hong Kong with police who are now seeking activists who are living abroad. Uh, we know that the changes today, uh, they were probably considered before this latest development happened. 
And so I'm just asking if you've been in touch with the minister about any further immigration measures Canada could do, given that we're seeing even more of a crackdown on civil liberties in the territory. Uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, we are monitoring the situation very closely, and hopefully we have, there will be some resolution coming up in the near future. Thank you for your question. Great, and um, if anyone wants to, to build on that, I'm just trying to understand, um, you said you're monitoring the situation, um, but I guess my question is specifically around immigration. If there's been any uh, discussion with Minister Fraser about that, or if any of the MPs, uh, other than the Parliamentary Secretary, wanted to speak to whether uh, we have enough in place, just given uh, the, the, the troubling trend that we're seeing in Hong Kong right now. I have, uh, Minister Fraser is not here at this announcement, and I have no comments to make about what's happening. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Joshua Wong from Fairchild Radio Vancouver. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hi there, this is Joshua from the Fairchild Video of Vancouver. Uh, I would like to clarify for the, today's announcement is to uh, lift the uh, graduation requirement for applying the Stream B, but not for the OWP, correct? Can you uh, please uh, repeat the question or go a little slow? Uh, I would like to uh, clarify for today's announcement uh, is to uh, only lift the requirement, uh, the graduation requirement for uh, applying for Stream B only, but not for applying for the open work permit, correct? The announcement today is for Stream B only. And that means if I come to Canada, I still have to graduate in 10 years to apply for the old, uh, open work permit, right? Uh, other streams, other streams are open at this. Do you want to answer? Go ahead. I, I can hear the... 10 years is correct. Okay, sorry. 10 years is correct. Thank you. Okay, and my uh, follow-up question is about the, the Hong, uh, CNC uh, certificate of no crime conviction. Uh, some opinions say it should be, uh, the, Canada, uh, the government of Canada should lift this requirement. So, uh, is it possible to lift this requirement? Uh, as, uh, it's very hard to get the CNC for some applicants. Thank you. Tanvir, I, I cannot hear the question itself. Are they speaking too fast for me to? I, yeah. Okay, once again, uh, uh, some opinions say uh, the uh, government of Canada should lift the requirement for getting the certificate of no crime conviction from the Hong Kong Police Force. Is it possible for IRCC to lift this requirement? If no, why? Can you hear the question? That is policy for IRCC. Okay. As far as I can see, that's a policy for IRCC to look at. Thank you. Thank you. We will now go back to the floor. De retour à la salle. Hi, hello. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, my question is about uh, removing the education requirement for the policy. Uh, it, it sounds to me right now anyone um, you know, with a temporary working visa, can apply to the policy, uh, the, you know, the new plan. And can you confirm this and explain who you, you know, will be benefiting from the new change? So the stream B one is where people are already here and they have worked here for at least for a year that can apply for permanent residency status in Canada. So that's what basically stream B, that's the way the changes are for stream B. Means, uh, uh, anyone, can you confirm this? Anyone, uh, you know, with a temporary working visa? Can that's apply? right, that's right, for ho people from Hong Kong. Oh, okay. yes. Also, uh, my follow up question is uh, it, it sounds to me it's a, a pretty, you know, great policy, but 
will the government consider in the future to, you know, make some changes to the refugee programs uh, specifically for Hong Kongers? Thank you so much for your question. Yes, as a government, we're always looking at changes and anytime we look at something that's positive to help Canada and people around the world, we will always implement those changes. Thank you. We'll go back, we'll go back to the phone line. Thank you. Merci. Once again, please press star 1 on the device's keypad. If you have a question, de nouveau, n'hésitez pas à faire étoile 1 sur votre appareil pour toute question. The next question is from Davis Legree from iPolitics. Please go ahead. Your line is open. Hi. Thanks very much for, for taking our questions. I apologize if I missed this, but do we have any forecasts or projections or, or any uh, specific numbers on, on how many people that this, these changes that you're announcing today are expected to impact? As of uh, April, April 2023, IRCC has issued 23,149 work permits under the Hong Kong Open Work Permit Program. This uh, number includes work permit extensions. But do we have any idea going forward how, how much that number may increase by now that these changes have been implemented? Well, it could change. It all depends on how many people are applying. So we have to keep an open mind as what requirements are from people from Hong Kong. So we have 23,000 here, uh, 23,149 people here on work permit. If they decide they want to stay here and carry on living in Canada, we will welcome them to have a permanent status here. And, and my follow-up, just really quick, was I just wanted to confirm that uh, these changes are being made in perpetuity. This is not, uh, you know, these are not being implemented on a, on a trial period, but these are permanent changes being announced today. That's right. This is a permanent change. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Once again, please press star 1 on the device's keypad if you have a question. N'hésitez pas à faire étoile 1 pour toute question. The next question is from Dylan Robertson from the Canadian Press. Please go, please go, please go ahead. Your line is open. Sorry. Hi again. Uh, I have a question for all the MPs except for Minister Zacek and Parliamentary Secretary Chang. Uh, I'd like to specifically hear from the MPs Yit, Chen, and Johari because they can speak as MPs instead of on behalf of the cabinet. And my question for these three MPs is if they have individually called for more policies for Hong Kong people other than what's been announced today, just given the trends that we're seeing in Hong Kong right now. Um, I can't speak for um, MP Jahari, but for myself, um, it's important to advocate for the community. And in my writing of Scarborough Aging Court, we have a sizable um, many people uh, from Hong Kong and as well from the rest of Canada that also contact me. And I think it's important to um, hear the voices and bring the concerns to the government. Thank you. Thank you. This is Maji Johari, member of parliament for Richmond Hill. Um, in Richmond Hill, um, in my writing, we have close to 15% of the uh, Chinese community from uh, Hong Kong. And uh, we are in close contact with them on many fronts. All those information are gathered on a regular basis and passed to various re uh, relevant and important departments. And based on those, the decisions are made. Uh, the decision that was announced today was regarding immigration, Stream B, as both of my colleagues uh, uh, have highlighted that. Uh, those are as a result of uh, direct community engagement as well as making sure that we are a strong advocate. As said, uh, the situation uh, is being closely monitored and our job is to ensure that we also uh, support uh, Canada in its need and where, where, it, uh, where the right resources and right people are going to come to be able to help us achieve the goal and also uh, maintain our, uh, our commitment to um, uh, our inclusiveness. Thank you. Thank you, and I'm Leah Taylor-Roy, Member of Parliament for Aurora Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill. 
and my riding abuts um, MP Maggie Jahari, so we also have a significant number of people from Hong Kong living in our riding. Um, and for me, the important issue is um, human rights and ensuring that we are vigilant as a country and that we're welcoming of people who would like to leave their country um, and come to Canada. So I've certainly been a great advocate for Canada's um, immigration and refugee policy, um, welcoming people who would like to leave their home country voluntarily for human rights issues. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and so my, my follow-up question uh, is sort of building on what Fairchild TV had raised about you know, the, the criminal past can bar you from getting to Canada, and yet we know Hong Kong police are laying charges for political reasons. Uh, so my, my question for the three MPs who are not ministers or parliamentary secretaries, uh, my question is if uh, you've had constituents actually raise that specific issue that they know people who can't actually get here because they've been charged with a political crime. So I'm, I'm not sure I understood the question correctly, but uh, I think you're talking about those uh, with criminal records um, and those that are accused of violating the national security law. Uh, inadmissibility decisions are made on a case-by-case -case basis and foreign convictions are carefully examined to see whether the act committed would have been an offense under Canadian laws if it had occurred in Canada. Um, for example, if someone who was arrested or charged with rioting or committing subversion, including under national security legislation for peacefully demonstrating or being at a protest, would not automatically be inadmissible as these actions are not crimes in Canada. So I hope that answers your question. Thank you. There are no further questions registered on the phone. Il n'y a plus de questions au téléphone. I'll turn the call back to the floor. De retour à la salle. Hi, this is Lily from Singtao. I'd like to ask if Hong Kong people uh, apply to come to Canada by other uh, pathway like a uh, working holiday or a close work permit. Can they work uh, one year and then to apply for the PR permanent resident? Thank you. Thank you so much for your question. Yes, that's what uh, Stream B is for people that have worked here for a year and they can apply for permanent residency after the year is over. So if, uh, if they got the uh, like working holiday permit here and can they apply for PR after one year? That's, yes, that applies for that too. Uh, for a working holiday too? That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Jie Yang from Omni TV. Uh, we know actually during COVID, um, there are a huge amount of backlog in, for the immigration application. So I just wonder how long it takes uh, the applicants in this stream could get a PR status. So are there any special arrangement? Thank you. Well, the numbers, uh, since COVID, there was a huge backlog of uh, since COVID and we have cleared up most of the backlog in, in IRCC and we are hoping that uh, the clearance rate is faster for the new applicants and that's what we are working towards. Thank you. How about uh, the applicants in this stream for the applicants from Hong Kong? We don't, I don't have a timeline for... Where is that? Yeah, I have that. Yeah. As I have said earlier, that as of uh, April 30th, 2023, uh, we have welcomed uh, 3,122 uh, permanent residents from Hong Kong. And uh, out of those, uh, you know, stream A, there's 2,358. And for stream B, there's 764 for stream B. So the numbers are quite low for uh, stream B and hopefully if uh, those people uh, would like to have permanent residency here, uh, you know, the pathway is there for them to uh, take advantage of. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Hi, this is Dr. Anna Wong. I am asking a question on behalf of Hong Kong or Station. Now, um, uh, I would like to first thank all the MPs for their hard work at the uh, uh, Parliament for advocating for Hong Kongers' rights and to um, in keeping with Canadian economy and employment needs. Now, uh, my other hat is actually a mental health and settlement service agency CEO. Uh, we understand that many of these applicants through the Hong Kong pathway came with not only talents, but trauma. So are we at the federal level considering open the uh, opening eligibility to these people uh, to services that are already available at various settlement services agency currently funded by IRCC so that they can be well equipped and empowered in no time uh, mentally and physically with career counseling language and all of those skills required to uh, reestablish their career and their life in Canada. Thank you. Thank you so much for your questions. Uh, in regards to the mental health issue, it is in, up to the individual to uh, seek services and seek help when they arrive in Canada. As uh, you have spoken about language services, in York Region we have five uh, welcome centers right across the region and they have different different services they provide for newcomers that, can, that land here in Canada. Just to clarify, Hong Kong Pathway candidates are uh, by status foreign workers and foreign students and therefore they are not eligible for IRCC funded settlement services. Thank you so much for that question and follow up. As we said, once they apply under Stream B, when they apply for permanent residency here, then they get status also here. Hi there, this is Eunice from Fairchild. I just want to say thank you, Dr. Anna Wong, for raising um, uh, this comment. Um, I've certainly heard it before, and uh, we have brought it up, and uh, we note your concern, and we'll continue to advocate those, those issues. Um, hello, this is Eunice from Fairchild Television. Um, on behalf of all the Hong Kongers, I would like to thank um, all of your hard work. It's definitely a good news for Hong Kongers for um, raising or lifting the extension. However, as you mentioned, like the require within the 10-year graduation is still applicable for the OWP, which means only people who graduated after 2013 will be able to apply for um, the OWP, hence then to apply to Stream B. So is the government actually looking to also extend or lift the bans on OWP so more people can actually apply so they can set foot in Canada first before actually applying to become PRs? Thank you. Um, I would say in general, the result, uh, the, this change that we announced today was the result of stakeholder consultation. So, I think you can be assured that we're listening, that we will take this type of feedback back, uh, and that IRCC is actively trying to address the issues that have been raised, including the one around mental health, which uh, strikes, I think, a lot of us as a bit of a gap. So, your comments are very welcome, and I know within my own constituency office, we record this type of uh, suggestion and obviously forward it to the relevant ministry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and that uh, concludes the press conference for today. Um, if we could just take a quick group shot uh, as well on stage, that would be great. Thank you.